evening and welcome to another edition of a Talk Wrap. Co-hosts Zach Scribner and Adrian Musso join alongside Julian Fantino and Teus Jordan. Guys, how are you tonight? Doing I'm good. good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, there's a lot to go around uh, to go over around the league, and then we'll get into the episode. So we'll start out with the OHL Player of the Week. Uh, you'll hear the name Logan Morrison in this next little bit. He's the OHL Player of the Week. He had four goals, nine assists for 13 points in four games along with a plus-minus rating of plus 10. Morrison earns Player of the Week recognition for the second time in three weeks, recording four consecutive multi-point games. For the second time this season, Levy Marilinen of the Kingston Frontenacs is the OHL Goaltender of the Week. He was 3-0 with a 1.33 goals against average and a 948 state percentage. Marilinen sits third in OHL wins with 24, playing to an overall record of 24-12-3-0 with a 3.43 goals against average and an 889 save percentage with two shutouts on the season. The Huron Tractor Attack Player of the Week is rookie forward Colby Barlow. Barlow scored four goals over two games and was instrumental in helping the attack, ending their eight-game losing skid. Looking at his season, Barlow has 19 goals on the year, the most scored by a 16-year-old player in the OHL this season. Let's turn over to the Western Conference standings. The Flint Firebirds are first in the Western Conference with 66 points. The Firebirds have been on a good, good stretch of hockey as of late. They're 7-1-1-1 in their last 10 games. The London Knights, who lead the Midwest Division with 62 points, are in second. That's the same amount of points as the third-place Sioux Greyhounds. The Windsor Spitfires, who the attack will see twice this month, are fourth in the conference. They're four points ahead of the Guelph Storm. Uh, from sixth to ninth place, it's a tight race. The Owen Sound attack hold the sixth spot, three points ahead of Erie. For the last place, for the last playoff spot, the Kitchener Rangers and Sarnia Sting are tied with 42 points. And in last place are the Saginaw Spirit with 35 points. In the Eastern Conference, the Hamilton Bulldogs and the Mississauga Steelheads are tied for the top spot in the conference with 68 points. The North Bay Battalion, who are 8 and 2 in their last 10 games, are third with 64 points one ahead of the Kingston Frontenacs. Bit of a drop-off point-wise at number five as the Generals have 53 points, three ahead of the sixth-place Barry Colts. The Ottawa 67s are seventh in the East, eight points ahead of the Sudbury Wolves. The Wolves are just two points behind. Uh, the Wolves just two points behind are the Peterborough Peets. The Peets are two points behind the Wolves, and the Niagara Ice Dogs are last with 31 points. Next, uh, let's take a look at a very close OHL scoring race. Wyatt Johnson of the Windsor Spitfires leads the OHL and CHL in scoring with 85 points. One ahead of Rory Cairns of the Sioux Greyhounds. He just signed an entry-level contract with the Calgary Flames today. Lucas Edmonds has 12 points in his last six games. He's third in league scoring with 83 points. Brandon Coe is, 84, is fourth in scoring with 81 points. One ahead of Luke Evangelista, who was the first player to score 40 goals in the OHL this season. OHL Player of the Month, Logan Morrison, is sixth with 75 points, two ahead of Brendan Othman of the Flint Firebirds. A few North Bay Battalion towards the end of the top 10, Matvey Petrov is eighth with 70 points, two ahead of Oshawa Generals forward Ty Tulio, and former attack forward and now overager for North Bay, Mitch Russell, is 10th in league scoring with 67 points. Turning to the attacks, top 10 in scoring, Denny Gore continues to lead the way with 44 points in 48 games played. Cedric Gaindon was second with 36 points, one ahead of Ethan Burroughs. European forwards Servak Petrovsky and Stepan Makachek are fourth and fifth. Petrovsky with 34 points and Makachek has 30 on the year. Nick Porco is sixth with 29 points, three ahead of rookie Colby Barlow and Sam Sedley, who each have 26 points. Rookie, Ga rookie forward Gavin Bryan has 21 points, three ahead of Logan Lestage, who rounds out the top 10 in scoring with 18 points. Next is the CHL team of the week, where we see three of the six players come from the OHL. Up front, the aforementioned Logan Morrison of the Hamilton Bulldogs is joined by Montreal Canadiens prospect Joshua Avoy of the Sherbrooke Phoenix, uh, who had 12 points in three games this past weekend. The final forward on the team is this this week is Carter Souch of the Edmonton Oil Kings, with who had five goals and three assists earns him CHL of the Team of the Week honors. On the back end, Nathan Steos capped off a tremendous weekend with a beautiful OT winning goal for his first career hat trick. His nine points in four games lines himself up beside Wolf Storm rookie D-man Michael Buchinger. Buchinger as the two defensemen in the CHL Team of the Week. Buchinger tallied 11 points in four games this past week. 
And between the pipes is, this week is Victoria Royals rookie goaltender Tyler Palmer, twice found the Wooten Calm in a pair of appearances with, in which he combined for one goal against and a 9.69 save percentage. The OHL Players of the Month with an impressive 29 points in the month of February's Hamilton Bulldogs forward Logan Morrison is the Player of the Month. Month Morrison recorded seven goals and 22 assists, a plus-minus rating of plus 21 over 10 games. Morrison had nine multi-point games in the month of February, his first on, first Bulldog player to win Player of the Month since November of 2019. The draft-eligible Blue Liner Michael but Buchinger of the Guelph Storm is a dual award winner, claiming both OHL Defenseman and Rookie of the Month honors for the month of February. The first year rear guard led all OHL Blue Liners in, and rookies with 17 points, including two goals and 15 assists over 12 games. Buchinger had points in 10 of the 12 contacts, recording back to back three point performances against Owen Sound and Windsor. He is the first Storm player to earn OHL D-Man of the Month honors since Sean Dersey. Flint Firebirds netminder Luke Cavallini, Cavallin, sorry, is the OHL goaltender of the month for February, going undefeated in regulation with an 8-0-1-1 record, a 2-6-5 goals against average, and a 9-27 save percentage in 11 games. Cavallini backs up the Firebirds to the top of the Western Conference standings, making 358 saves over the co course of the month. Cavalin has played 25-9-1-3 record with a 319 goals against average and a 909 save percentage with two shutouts in his 40 games this season. With today being March, March 1st, a few changes are upcoming to Ontario Hockey League games. First off, every venue is now full capacity. Group and individual tickets are available for attack games. And as we will go over towards the end of the show, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to catch the attack at the Bayshore this week. And on top of that, no proof of proof of vaccination is required for entry at the Bayshore, as well the QR codes are now gone. Masks are still required to be worn at the arena. For tickets, head over to attackhockey.com or go down to the box office. <clears throat> and just before we start the show, a big congratulations towards attack captain Mark Woolley, who had a successful evening Saturday night with Woolley's Warriors. Thank you towards everyone who donated at the arena, whether it be through the silent auctions, chuck a puck, or the jersey auctions. I'm told the numbers aren't finalized yet, but north of $15,000 was raised this past weekend for Woolies Warriors. Once again, a big thank you and congrats to Mark Woolley and Woolies Warriors for an evening that went viral. Now, guys, yesterday I, I had my grade five and five to eights were greeted by Nick Chenard and Denny Gua for a presentation in partnership with. Canadian Mental Health Association, Gary Bruce, a very cool initiative that the team has coming into schools, this time it was virtually, of course, and talking about mental health. Now, I have a few questions for you that came about that my students asked and that were posed to Nick and Denny that I just want to get your guys' um, thoughts, opinions, and uh, process when it comes to uh, certain of these questions. First off, how how do you cope when difficult situations, albeit on the ice or um, with the team, when the difficult situations come up, how do you cope around the rink? And what may be some distractions that you have to help with that? Um, yeah, so really what I do personally, I just take a breath. Um, no, I am a pretty good hockey player and I just need to need to know that mentally before I step on the ice or just uh, mentally say to myself, you are the best player and you need to show that you are and that you're meant to be here. Um, some ways I like cope with it is um, getting on the bike and doing a hard workout that usually helps or talking to my family members and uh, seeing what I've done wrong or my agency and uh, correcting the mistakes I've made and uh, then going through the next day and being better. And Julia? Yeah. yeah, for me, it's just probably talking to the people you're most close with and you can trust and relate to, whether it be family, friends, teammates, even the coaching staff, uh, anyone. There's plenty of resources uh, available to you. Just got to find the right people to talk to for you. Uh, guys, a busy schedule for the month of February is gone and busier into March. Is this OHL schedule 
busier than it was in your minor midget seasons. Uh, what do you guys do to be prepared on and off the ice and trying to stay healthy through a busy month of March? Uh, for me, definitely getting in the gym and making sure I do a full workout every day if I can. Um, if we have back-to-back -back games, which we usually do, um, I'll make sure I get the proper sleep I need and nutrition that I need before uh, the next day comes, which uh, usually is a big day for game days. Um, but other than that, just trying to stay off my phone as much as I can and uh, just doing the right things. Yeah, for, for me, I'd say, honestly, just uh, being active, you know, not uh, sitting around, just taking care of your body, whether it's before practice, hopping on the bike or getting a, a light workout in or after practice, you know, stretching and dealing with the things that you need. Don't let any nagging injuries, you know, linger or anything like that. Talk to your uh, athletic therapist and uh, just keep on your body with nutrition and rest. Uh, Tess, you kind of mentioned it there alluding to my next question about a game day. It's Saturday. It's a 7.30 puck drop. How do you, how do you and Julian, you, you as well, how do you guys prepare for game day? And what's your game day routine? Uh, generally, we would have school in the morning. And then as soon as we get home, which is probably around like two-ish, um, I'd just go right to bed, wake up for 3.15, uh, have my dinner. And then as soon as that's over, I just get changed. And then I go to Tim's and uh, get to the arrive at the rink and do all my stretching, passing with the puck and uh, stick handling. And then uh, usually I just, I play two of my uh, songs right in my headphones before the game and then I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same way. I'm still in school with him. So we just go to school till two, come home. I usually like, taking an hour, hour and a half nap, then wake up, have my pregame meal, have some chicken with pasta and some uh, veggies, and then head off to Tim's, get get a coffee, and then head to the rink. I'm not very superstitious before the game. I just, like, tape my sticks and then going out there. Hey, what's what's the pregame meal for you? A lot of guys seem to be the chicken pasta, chicken parm. What's your go-to? Yeah, mine's usually chicken parm, or recently I've actually tried chicken fingers. And uh, it's actually been working pretty well for me, so I might just keep it with that. Please tell me they're non-breaded chicken fingers. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's always veggies on the side, so. <laughs> One more question uh, before we go to last Wednesday's highlights against London. Um, what excites you both, both of you now that we're into March and looking to make that, uh, that playoff push? Like I mentioned, full capacity at the base shore a few minutes ago. This is gearing up to be both of your first playoff runs in the OHL. Uh, part one to the question, have you started asking some of the vets about playoffs? And most importantly, what messages do you guys have for the fans to pack the buildings now that we're allowed full capacity? Yeah, well, we're for sure excited for uh, playoffs to be coming up soon. Uh, I haven't asked too many questions because right now we're kind of trying to treat each game as like a playoff series. So we get that in our heads, uh, playoffs is around the corner and uh, we just gotta be mentally prepared. Um, but yeah, we need everybody at the Bay Shore. It's always a blast to have a ton of people there. Um, the energy is always good and it's always uh, fun to see people uh, in one big like community in one spot. So it's definitely very fun to see. Yeah, for us, it'd be just every point matters now going up to the playoffs. We only got 20-something games left, so points are points are huge, especially uh, in conference or division games. So you got to take care of that. And once uh, now we're full capacity, so to get all the fans behind us uh, during a game uh, is huge. It's definitely going to be a big bonus for our team. Like I mentioned, the attack, we're home to the London Knights for the last time this season. It was the Knights' final visit at the Bay Shore. Let's throw to those highlights. The attack in the Knights. We are underway. Thanks for joining us on Rogers TV. The attack will look to push it right into the Knights zone right off the bat here. Cedric Gandon, it's blocked. Back to Nicholas Porco. Porco leaves it on the half wall for Petrovsky. Down low for Portacalis to Burroughs, and he put it off the post. Snapped it up the left boards. McHugh will leave off for Evangelista. Lost the handle of it. McHugh knocks it down onto his forehand. Gets it into the crease. Scramble is on. And Owen Sounds, Fantino was able to push it into the Gators up and over the boards momentarily. The Knights, though, push the tempo. 
Here is Landon Sim. Shot along the ice, he scores! Sim able to squeak it through, and the Knights strike first. It was right to step in, Markacek on the steal. Gives it to the Sage, back to Petrovsky. Drags, great delay, coming in tight. Backhander, and the save was made by Broshu. It looked like the puck might have just bobbled at the last second on Petrovsky. Steal by Bryant in front. Good save by Brochu is up off the glass and it stays in play. Sedley with the wrist shot deflected. Here's a beautiful opportunity for Cedric Anton to put it into the yawning cage. The attack tied things up. He's made by Shinobi. Heading to the goal on the backhand. Save made by Brochu. It's it for Mayu. Mayu holds the puck into the high slot. Passes it to Stranges. Without a stick is Petrovsky. A one-timer. Evangelista scores. So it came loose, Evangelista, he's going to find McHugh. McHugh steps around the defender looking for the empty net. He missed it, kicks out though. Baber's not going to miss that one. Puts it into the empty net. And caught by Mayu. Chance for Barlow in the slot. Down low, Portacalis. Barlow hit the post. Knights prevail 3-1. A 3-1 to one win for the London Knights over the Owen Sound attack. Uh, we'll start out with Tails for this question. Now 40-goal for, scorer Luke Evangelista uh, was only held to a goal and an assist Wednesday night. To some, it may not sound like a ton, but this is a guy with 16 points against Owen Sound this season. In a close effort against one of the top teams, how did you guys think you did on the defensive side of the game against London? Uh, I think we did pretty good. There's definitely some errors that we probably could have taken back. Uh, Luke Vangelista is a great overall player. He's one of the best in our league. But uh, with all good players, they have the same habits, right? So we just got to find, find a way to uh, figure those habits out on the ice and then uh, implement them into our game, into a defensive style so uh, he can be stopped. Uh, Jul Julian, the team may not have won, but in order to break losing streaks, you need to start putting in good performances. And that's what I found what, watching that game Wednesday night was you guys actually had a really good game um, from my perspective. Was the message the same post-game in the room? And, and was it also, were the coaches saying if you guys play like that on Friday night in Kitchener that you guys would come out victorious? Yeah, totally. We thought we had a great game. thought we could have done everything we can control the game we a couple maybe i want to say bad penalties some bad calls at the end there they had the five on three which they they ended up capitalizing on and the last goal was empty netter but i thought overall team played a great game and the message from the coaching staff is you play like that every night you're gonna win a lot of games so it translates to the next game so that was good that we could uh end the losing streak there just one more question for you, Julian. Uh, going into the game, five of the seven pr previous ones versus the Knights were decided by one goal. This one, albeit by two with an empty netter. Um, is there one area you guys feel that maybe you're just falling short against uh, going up against London this year? Yeah, it's it, it's honestly probably just converting on your chances. When you're playing against a team like that, that's so technical and and uh, they're a great team, you, you really got to convert on all your chances. You don't, You get few few chances and uh the ones you do you got to convert on so we just probably had to bear down and finish a couple more chances but either than that i thought we've played very well against them in the games that we we've had now Teus, i've noticed in warm-ups uh you've been repping a new a different tape job as of late than most uh and i've also noticed on uh cedric's and okitendu stick as well um now would you like to elaborate on your on your stick to, uh stick tape job on your stick um on the blade of your stick specifically as well yeah for sure so um me and cedric did this thing where it says tape out the hate and we got a couple rolls of it so every warm-up we would put that on our, on our stick to represent um just uh ethnicity differences between players and how uh hockey is supposed to be fun and supposed not not supposed to be like uh all about judging uh because of your skin color or whatever so me and him decided for the next for the rest of the year we're going to wear that in warm-ups uh they posted out on twitter already a couple of our interviews with uh brock tanner one of our media guys so if you guys want to check it out on there it's pretty pretty cool yeah i like uh like tis just said viewers at home if uh if you can go on twitter there's a nice video of Cedricson and Teos talking about their eth ethnicity and playing hockey as an ethnic player. Julian, uh, on a line with speedster Thomas Chafe and veteran William Portacalis, uh, how do you feel the line plays as a whole? 
And how do the other two fit into your style of playing really complement your game? Yeah, totally. I think uh, we've been doing the best we can there on the fourth line, trying to give uh, guys energy on the team, you know, going out there and just doing the best we can to try to generate something for the team. Chafer obviously is incredibly fast, fast skater. It always helps to play with him. You know, you pick up the pace in the game and then uh, Porta Callis, obviously a very skilled veteran for, and it's always nice to have like a veteran's presence on your line. Now, guys, it's time for a new game that we've started in the second half of the year. It's time for the quiz. Um, I've explained the, the rules to you guys before the show, so I have questions set aside for you guys. And uh, to give you your best chance, I'll give you a final grade at the end of the, at the, end of the quiz. Um, so the first question is to both of you guys, how many points did the other put up in their minor midget season? Give them two or four as, as a range. Don't have to be exact, but close yeah, enough. Yeah, within, uh, within, within three points. Julian, you can go first. I have to think about this. <laughs> um, I'll give him 15. 15? Am I close? Yeah, Teos was an offensively gifted player in minor midget. He had 28 plus. <laughs> 28? Yeah. Miss that then. There. Oh, yeah. I'm still missing it, man. <laughs> trying to find it. And your guess for uh, Julian? I'm going to say... 32. Julian led his Richmond Hill Coyotes in scoring with 46 points in 30, 36 games, I believe. So you guys both undershot each other. You guys will put up a lot of points in that series, don't worry. All right. Yes. Speaking of your Whitby Wildcats, how many alumni have played in, NA in, in the NHL, a game in the NHL? Um... I'm going to say maybe three, guys. Fourteen. Really? Yeah, and there's currently one NHLer. Uh, this isn't a question, but there's currently one NHLer from the Whitby Wildcats program, and it's the real deal James Neal, who is oh, wow. in the NHL, from, graduated from the Whitby Wildcats. However, my next question is for you again, Teus. Of the 14 Whitby Wildcats that have played in the NHL, which one – has his banner and jersey hanging from the rafters in the Bay Shore. Oh, in the Bay Shore. Oh, man. I don't know. I really don't look up there often. It is the big Wayne Primo is a graduate of the Whitby Wildcats organization. And fun fact, he fought his brother Keith once in a NHL game. So fun <laughs> fact awesome. for you guys all. Go watch that on YouTube. Julian. Your Richmond Hill Coyotes team had the most players of the organization drafted in a single OHL draft in the last 10 years. How many were drafted? In the NHL draft? No. OHL. Of your, your specific minor midget team, how many were drafted to the OHL? I think we had six. Six or six? That okay. is the correct answer. Yeah, we had six, six guys. Six we were go. drafted. Of the six that were drafted, how many have played an OHL game this season? Uh, four. That is correct. Can you name them? Yeah. Uh, Pete Colson Petrie. Yeah. Uh, Ryan O'Dell and Quinn Binney. Correct. And yourself, of course. Yeah, there you go. Um, and now, Teus, in the summer of 2021, Julian was celebrating what championship win on Market Lane in Woodbridge? Sorry, say that again. You were celebrating what? In the summer of 2021, Julian was celebrating what championship win on the on Market Lane in the Woodbridge? Uh, oh, come on, man. Can we give him a hint? Yeah, give me a him hint. And, oh. Him and uh, Zo. Yeah, him and Lorenzo were both celebrating this big championship win. Was it? Not playing. <laughs> was it OHL Cup? No. no. I don't remember what it was. Julian, what were you celebrating in the summer of 2021? The Euro Cup. Come on. Oh, man. Italy's big win. Huge. Uh, yeah. And Teus, 
this is a question for both of you guys, actually. Teus, you were drafted in the 12th round. Julian, you were drafted in the 8th, making you guys the uh, the latest drafted to attack players on the current lineup. That were chosen in the priority selection. Who is next on the list? For the latest? Uh... Like on the team. Yeah, so like basically like the the – one yeah. of the last players in the draft, right? That's playing right now? Currently on the team. He was picked in the sixth round. Six. Oh, Shenard. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's your roommate over there, Tess. Yeah. You better get that right next time. Sure. <laughs> uh, that's another uh, edition of the quiz. Julian, you get a B plus, and yes, I'm sad, but you're gonna get a C plus on this. Uh, well, we only have about three minutes till break, so we'll throw out the first trivia question. Uh, win a pair of tickets to tomorrow's game against the Kitchener Rangers. Julian Fantino has two goals on the season. Uh, his second goal was scored against which OHL team? Like I mentioned, you'll win a pair of tickets to tomorrow's game against the Kitchener Rangers. Teus, uh, you were a 12th round pick. You made it onto the team and really getting good minutes in your first OHL season uh, compared to a lot of rookies. Do you ever take the time to reflect on your journey from minor midget and all the way up until this season? Yeah, all the time. Uh, it's definitely a blessing to be able to get picked by Owen Sound. Uh, my dad always believed in me as well as my mom and brother. So all I really had to do when I went to training camp was realize that um, it's just a number and you got just got to go show up, show the coaches who you are as a hockey player. And uh, they really liked who I was and they signed me. So it was really it was such a great moment. Uh, speaking of other rookies have stepped up as well up until the injury. Oki was playing consistently as has Cal Ewins. Uh, what has impressed you the most with your, the most with your rookie defensive partners? Um. They're all great guys to play with from what I've uh, seen. Um, I can definitely read off a bunch of the rookies a lot better than some of the veterans just because I know their playing style. Um, but it's definitely always a fun time to play with Oki um, and Cal as well as Steiner. That, uh, that about does it for the first half of the show tonight. Stick around. We'll have much more with Julian and Teus. We'll have what's in the hat, other highlights from this past week, and plenty more here on the Tack Wrap on Rogers TV. is brought to you by OHL Action Pack. Looking to see tomorrow's stars today? Follow the teams and players you want to watch. OHL Action Pack is part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. This is the last move we're making, right? Right. It's a fixer-upper. That means we can make it whatever we want. You know, there are rumors about that well. What do you know about the well? Old Tom said it was a curse. Did you make a wish for someone to still be here? I started over once, too. Different. Get ready. Could you use some extra cash? Tune in to McLaren Arts Center TV Bingo on Rogers TV for your chance to win. We have $2,500 in prizes up for grabs every Tuesday night. Five ways to play, 20 chances each night, but only one way to win. Tune in to McLaren Arts Center TV Bingo, Tuesdays at 8 p.m., only on Rogers TV. Every year, Dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca.
Welcome back to Attack Wrap. Zach Scribner and Jordan and Adrian Musso, I should say, joined alongside Julian Fantino and Teus Jordan. Uh, Teus, zero goals on the season, still in search of your first career goal, but I truly do feel that it's coming. Do you feel frustrated about it at this point, or are you just happy to contrib contribute offensively when you get the chance? Yeah, I haven't been too happy with not scoring uh, any goals yet this year, just because I've been known as a goal scorer. So I'm um, definitely trying to step on the gas a little bit and uh, put more pucks in the back of net when I can. But I am definitely thankful for the opportunity that I can uh, get some offensive presence uh, during the game. And that will definitely, there will definitely be more to come in the next few games. There were plenty of goals scored Friday night at the Kitchener Auditorium. Let's throw it to last Friday's highlights against the Rangers. Point Hollett's stick explodes on the shot attempt. Taken away by Sedley. Breakout yeah, pass. Petrovsky totally in and too. scores. I, I, I don't know how to read. And after the stick breaks from Ty Hollett, that puck just comes nicely to Servak Petrovsky all alone. And he goes bar down and gets that opening road goal. And away go the attack. Drop pass from Denny Gore is a quick shot and they score. Pass Pavel Chayan on the Denny Gore shot. That's the 19th of the season for Ethan Burroughs. And the good start just continues. Actually, it was a good feed off and Burroughs unloaded a great shot that just handcuffed Pavel Chayan. Cal Ewins couldn't hold the blue line. Another chance for Joseph Serpa. This time it's a breakaway. Serpa in, he scores. Go pass here goes Petrovsky again. Servak Petrovsky, he scores. Schinner, just look at this beautiful feed up to him right through. Dahl first on scene. Centering pass and they score. Get caught puck watching as you see. Owen Sound keeps the puck alive. They chip it on in to the Rangers end. Good work there by Owen Sound again. Dahl. Plays it to Burroughs. Burroughs has Gore going to the net. Burroughs steps into the middle. He shoots. That gets stopped. Gore scores. He's ahead for Gain Dong. Colby Barlow walks in. He fires and scores. And some of the Ranger fans have hit the exit signs a little early here, as you'll see. Gain Dong drop this off there for Barlow. That gets checked by Bonnie Uto, but Mitchell Martin picks up. Mitchell Martin to Serpa, and he scores. The Owen Sound attack snapped their eight-game losing streak with a victory over the Kitchener Rangers Friday night. Teus Servak Petrovsky really got the team going with two goals. The line of gained on Petrovsky and Barlow were dynamic in this game. How hard is it to defend that line in practice? Um, it's pretty hard to defend. Uh, they're definitely very skilled players. Uh, Matchy's a very strong guy as well, so it's pretty hard to get the puck off him when he's uh, in the zone. So they're definitely tough to play against and one of the best on our team. Now, Julian, Colby Barlow scored his first goal in six games. His celebration was the throw the monkey off the back. Sam Sedley was quoted as saying, we were joking around and like, man, some guys haven't scored here in 10 games and he's in a little drought and he's getting mad about it. Is Colby Barlow a different breed of hockey player? And in practice, is he expecting to score on every single shot? Yeah, he definitely puts uh, a lot of pressure on himself to score goals. Like he's known as a, a goal scorer. So yeah, we were joking around. We thought it was actually hilarious. Like a 16-year-old has scored in six games. He's throwing the monkey off the back. I still think he got it from when Passersov did it against us in Guelph because he did that. I think he hasn't scored in like 12 games. So I think he got it from him. But yeah, it's pretty funny. I definitely tried to score a lot in practice. You know, you just pretty much same as all the guys though. You know, practice is important because what happens there translates to the game. So it starts in practice for sure. Speaking of the Midwest Division and Sasa Passage, I have a question for you both. Uh, the Midwest Divi Division is filled with lots of talent. You look at Guelph with second round pick Daniel Cheka. You mentioned Passage of a third round NHL pick. Francesco Pinelli, a second round pick to LA. As a first year guy in the league, is there an intimidation factor to you guys? And uh, start out with that and then I'll ask you a second part uh, afterwards. Um, I would say at the very start, it was a bit t intimidating, especially playing against some of the big names like Luke Evangelista. Um, but now I've really calmed down and just play my own game. So I'm not too intimidated by anybody anymore. Like, uh, so there's really no fear in my game. Um, but yeah. Yeah. 
for me, I, I was never really intimidated by them. It's just you got to know when they're on the ice because they're obviously like elite players in our league. And when they're on the ice, you, you have to know and you kind of maybe have to change your game to defend them a little bit more. But there's there's just nothing really to be intimidated about them. It's more, oh, wow, like look who I'm playing against now. It's kind of like a realization thing more than a scary thing. So, Julian, from a forward point of view, what do you guys do to limit their scoring chances? And Teus, as a defenseman, what do you personally do to take time and space away against some of those big big name guys? Um, I would just say just keeping my gaps controlled and uh, making sure I'm the one in front of the net before they get there. Um, and sticks and lanes, just simple defensive movements uh, that really cause a trouble for some of the big names. Yeah, for the, for the forwards, mostly it'd just probably be having like a good neutral zone coverage. Like, obviously, you don't want them to enter the zone with speed and and uh, have zone time because when that they get time and space, uh, that's when they're deadly and they become elite players. So I'd say just taking away their time and space mostly. Now it seems like Nolan Seed will be returning to the uh, to the lineup in the coming days, maybe a week or so. Um, what will he do to help bolster the, the back end down the stretch? As you guys played a couple games this week, even with five only five defensemen after Nolan or after Matt and Steen got injured on Friday night. Yeah, well, he's a, definitely a big part of our uh, team. Um, he brings a, a very skilled presence whenever he's on the ice, so I think that will help us out a lot uh, on power play and um, getting shots to the net. So I think he's a very talented player, and he has great things to bring to his team. Just uh, one more question before we go to the Wooly Warriors highlights. Uh, let's talk about the Wooly effect for you, Teus. Uh, what have you learned playing alongside the captain here in the past little while? It seems in the past few weeks, the element of physicality has really been noticed in your game. Yeah, well, I've always uh, watched to see how Wolves plays because uh, he's a very physical guy. And I love to implement physicality in my game. So I'm just trying to step it up even a higher level than him, uh, which is tough knowing that he has a C on his, uh, on his uh, jersey and he's a big dog. But I'm really just looking up to him and trying to use that as pressure is how I want to be better. So Let's uh, throw to the highlights of Woolies Warriors night Saturday against the Guelph Storm. are underway. Thanks for joining us on Rogers TV. So the Storm will send it quickly in, out into the slot. Pappas with a shot. He scores! How about that? Nine seconds is all it takes, and Matthew Pappas silences the Bayshore. Here's Colby Barlow. Cuts across to the right wing. Now back into the middle. Sends it to Cedric Ganton. Center down front. Barlow's gonna jump on it, and he scores! Colby Barlow! Gets it back for the attack. Wrist shot blocked in the slot. Barlow could be open for the breakaway. The pass finds him. Barlow looking to go back to back. Oh, baby, he does just that. Colby Barlow, he's red hot, and the attack have the lead. Done it very efficiently. Here's a redirect that just misses on the short side. Barlow was looking for the natural hat trick. Owen Sound stacks up high. He goes down low. One-timer burrows and a save. Astajov turns, beats his man Sedley into the slot with a backhand, and a good blocker save is made there by Shenard. Now Shilkin on the back. It comes to Pap as a shot. Save from Shenard. Can he get it smothered? No. Puck. The worst part, we're going to have to hear about that forever. Here's Denny Gore stepping around from a sharp angle out in front. And the pass just misses step in Makacek when leading after 40. Bowman down low. Carabell on the backhand. Just sent it wide. Allen from the right point across to Bushinger. Bushinger holds it. Let's a shot go. Deflected on net. Shenard to save the rebound. Went through. Out of the box comes Burroughs. Hustling back in. Carabell across. One timer. Pappas scores. Second of the night for Matthew Pappas. And he ties the game. On his backhand, throws it up to Chibrikov, gets it onto his forehand. One timer coming. Barlow! Did he score? No! What a save from Jacob Oster. Burroughs picks it up. Burroughs going five hole, jams away. It's still loose. They'll scramble in the crease, and Oster kept it out. A series of great saves. Here come the storm. Bushinger stepping in with the shot. Shenard stops it, and the attack head the other way. Three on one. Up to Sedley. Back to Burroughs. Burroughs on his off wing, across to Sedley. Sedley can't settle it down. Now he has control behind the net. Sam Sedley steps out, he scores! Good night, the attack win, Sam Sedley!
big overtime victory for the Owen Sound attack over the Guelph Storm 3-2 to two at the Bay Shore Saturday night on Woolies Warriors night. A question to you both. Uh, Sam Sedley scores the OT winner and has quite possibly the best celebration possible. Adrian and I thought he was going to pull out the gritty, but the one he chose was what was much more fitting. What were your thoughts on the goal and the celebration that he chose? Yeah, I thought he was going to do that too. I thought I thought he was going to pull out the gritty, but no, it was it was a great celebration, kind of like unveiling the the Woolies Warriors jersey there. So it was awesome. Honestly, it was an awesome moment for our team, but more importantly for Wolves and like the amazing uh, foundation charity that he's built. So it was something special for sure. Yeah, it was definitely it was the coolest celebration I've ever seen for sure, and it was such a great moment for uh, Sam to do that. Uh, the goal was unreal. He was definitely plays perfectly in the net. And then uh, I also thought he was going to do the gritty, but then he told me he accidentally just stumbled. And then uh, he pulled out the Woolies Warriors. And uh, it was just an overall great experience for him. And I'm very happy that he did that. Mateus, Nick Chenard is now 6-0 and against the Guelph Storm. Uh, he may have let in nine uh, a goal nine seconds into the game. Uh, tying a Guelph Storm record as fast as goals, um, another fun fact for you all. But uh, he really sell- settled in after that. How would you evaluate Ricky's performance in the, uh, on Saturday night? Yeah, I think he did well. Um, we, def- we won the game, so that's always a start. Uh, but it always starts with the goaltending, right? So if uh, we all feed off Nick and he always brings it to us and uh, he'll let us know if we're doing something wrong or we need to figure it out. So um, having him as a quarterback is pretty nice. So I think he played pretty well uh, Saturday night. Julian, unfortunately, on Saturday night, you were in the stands watching this game. But uh, did you feel a different buzz around the rink when it came to not only Woolies Warriors night, but uh, and now we're getting in on to, on to tomorrow night's game with uh, added, added uh, fans full capacity. Did you feel a different buzz around the rink? Yeah, totally. It was definitely a lot louder, like we were saying, when – they scored the overtime goal. Like we've never heard it that loud kind of went on the ice and a big goal like that happens. It was actually, I thought it was louder from the stands to be honest. And then on the ice, you were right there with all the fans. So honestly, it was just a cool moment and it's going to be great once we get hundred percent capacity in the Bay shore. Uh, question for you both. Mark Woolley was interviewed in the second intermission. And at that point it was two to one uh, in Owen sounds favor. Michael Harris asked what the team needed to do to secure the victory. Mark delivered a nice message, ending it with, we don't lose Saturdays at the Bay Shore. Does everyone in the room have that same confidence that Wooly had in that interview? Yeah, for sure. We've always said we never lose on Saturday nights uh, just because it's such a big moment Saturday nights. Everybody's there. It's always a big get-together. So um, we definitely wanted to bring everything we had onto that ice and leave everything out there and uh, leave nothing in the room. So I think we did our part as a whole and uh Wooly said it great in the interview so we got the job done yeah definitely you want you want to win on saturday saturday night start home game we have all the fans there and you know you want to you want to keep the fans happy and you want to keep them coming back so there's no better way to do that than than to get a dub following the attacks win over the Guelph storm saturday night mark mccallie stood by ringside with assistant coach jordan hill Mark McKelvey standing ringside following the Owen Sound attacks 3-2 overtime win over the Guelph Storm joined by assistant coach Jordan Hill and Jordan uh, a thrilling finish on a pretty special night uh, right off the bat uh, I don't want to dive right into tonight's initiative and the game we were raising funds for Woolies Warriors uh, you've had the opportunity to work with Mark for quite some time now how special was this night yeah very special I'm so proud of what Mark's done over the last few years and being able to watch him and how much he's given back to the community so this was something that uh, as a team we were really uh, Really gung-ho about getting the win for him, and I'm just so happy we got it done tonight. Uh, you could see the in the celebration how much this victory meant, but if we go back nine seconds into the game, you guys give up a goal, kind of an unusual one, but nonetheless, uh, one that could have probably phased you guys. You seemed to settle down, though. Did you feel any sort of anxiousness on the bench after that goal went in just nine seconds in? Yeah, it was a shocker, no question. Obviously, uh, a bounce that came right through the crease. I thought... Uh, Ricky could have played, Chenard, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it is what it is. Bad, bad, bad bounces happen in hockey, uh, so I was proud of our group, like you said, uh, settle down and get, get going on offense again. 
How important was it or what was the message going into tonight's game based off of what happened on Monday afternoon against them? Uh, it was a very disappointing effort, no doubt about that. But was there a, a bit of a message of revenge on your guys' mind about uh, making up for what happened uh, down in Guelph? I mean, yeah, we definitely wanted to, you know, have a better outcome than it was in Guelph. Um, you know, we, we always talk about short-term mentality. So, you know, we digested that game the next day. We moved on from it. You know, we had a good game in Kitchen the night before, and we made our adjustments we needed to make as coaches, and the players were ready to go for Mark, and that's uh, what led to two points. You talk about then having a short-term memory, but uh, obviously you guys were able to build off of that win on Friday night. But did you start to see some seeds maybe being planted for success uh, with the effort you guys gave on Wednesday against London and what was a pretty close battle? Yeah, I think even through our, our little bit of a losing streak, um, you know, the effort's always been there. It's just been bad bounces here or, you know, we're injuries here, there. You know, a lot of times we outplay teams like you saw in Kitchener, 68 shots to 27. You know, we lose. I, know, I think we outplayed Barry a little bit. Um, you know, we're out shoot teams a lot. Just were, you know, not finding ways to score. And then obviously a couple of bad bounces and on the other end that end up in the back of our net. So I think through that losing streak, you know, we learned a lot about our team, obviously ups and downs. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we definitely have, are building something here towards the playoffs. Last couple of questions. And, and you talk about scoring. You guys got some great production from Colby Barlow this weekend. Uh, four goals over the last two games. Uh, he's just got a, what appears to us to be a tremendous shot, probably a shot for a player that you wouldn't guess would be 16 in this league. Uh, what do you see from him and the kind of shot that he has at this age? Yeah, he's a guy that can rip the puck, like you said, no question. And at 16, I'm excited to see where it goes uh, when he gets older and puts on a little more a little more muscle, which he already seems to have. He skates around there like a, like a man at times. Um, but very smart player. He puts himself in good spots um, to get those opportunities. And I'm just excited for his future, no question. All right, and last question. Uh, again, coming up this week, more Kitchener, more Guelph. Uh, we've seen these teams so many times. But how much do you believe uh, the performances in the most recent games really carry over? And, and obviously, having had success this weekend you guys have to be feeling pretty good going into Wednesday's game yeah we do I mean you know we obviously get up for those games the vision games the conference games these are huge points at this point in the season you know Kitchener's a big rival for us um, so I've got no question our guys will be ready and this, these are points we need to get all right well best of luck congratulations on the two wins and uh, back at it Wednesday night thanks Mark appreciate it all right as mentioned 7 p.m. puck drop Wednesday night the attack hosts the Kitchener Rangers A big thank you to Mark McKelvey and assistant coach Jordan Hill for standing by for that interview Saturday night after their victory over the Guelph Storm. Guys, uh, looking ahead to this to this month, some games are against teams you may not be as familiar with as you go up against Saginaw three times, two home games against the Erie Otters, Sarnia and Windsor in there as well. Are you guys watching more videos on off days because of the unfamiliar, unfamiliarity of these teams you're going up against? Um not too much videos going on right now with uh other teams uh just because we want to keep playing our game because we've been doing well the past couple of games so i think we just stick to our game plan and play our way we will uh pull out with our victories yeah same not not too much uh film right now we'll we'll run through like the other teams power play and penalty kill and like how we can match up and what systems we're going to use we usually do that the day before or, uh during during game day so yeah julian uh, not to throw you under the bus here but when we do what's in the hat most of the guys say you talk the most in the room uh do you agree with that statement or do you feel someone else on the squad deserves that title oh uh, i don't know i think there's a, a couple other guys that are that are up there for sure but i don't know i'm i'm a pretty loose guy i'm not like superstitious or uptight or anything so i like to keep the uh, change room kind of like fun and fun and loose at times so yeah now, there's another two tickets up for grabs for Saturday's game against Saginaw. If you call in to Mark Perry and uh, with the answer to this question, how much money did Woolies Warriors raise on Saturday night? So the question is, how much money did Woolies Warriors raise on Saturday night? You call in with the right answer, you'll get two tickets to Saturday's game against the Saginaw Spirit. Um, with that being said, and Julian, we have changed the questions for what's in the hat. So it's time for another edition of what's in the hat. Um, are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. First question. Favorite sport other than hockey? Um, mine is golf for sure. I uh, do a lot of competitions in the summer. So uh, that would definitely be mine. Yeah, I'd have to say uh, soccer and then a close kind of second would be golf too, but soccer. 
All right, next up. Best nickname on the team? Uh, oh, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> as you guys know. think, Mark Woolley gave Teos his uh, nickname toes or fingers last week as his <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, gonna... I'll give it that one yeah that's a good one <laughs> yeah i actually like tino's nickname uh tino is his nickname first name julian obviously so i i like his probably the best awesome uh next best arena food so e it doesn't have to be the bay shore food but best arena food that you've ever had Ooh, like um I, I think, mine's definitely sorry go ahead no I, I was gonna say remember that one game north bay i think on the bus home from north bay we we got food from their rink and it was just outstanding like chicken parm pasta rice mm-hmm. potatoes it was loaded so i'd, I'd say i think that one yeah does it have to be in the ohl food or no i know not at all okay so mine would definitely be canland scarborough the uh the little shop up there they have the best wings ever and uh i always have a blast eating all of those awesome two more questions for you guys for what's in the hat favorite subject in school and i'm gonna exclude as being a phys ed teacher i'm gonna exclude that as yeah. well. um mine would probably be uh probably chemistry just because um, I want to be a firefighter when I'm older, if hockey doesn't work out. So, um, yeah. Mm, I'll, I'll say business. I'll go, I'll go with business. Very cool. And the final question. Best and worst chirper on the team? Best. Um, Said's probably the best. I was gonna say. I don't know. What do you think? I was gonna say. Yeah, I I honestly think Said's is the best, and Ricky's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I right. honestly think that. Yeah, I'll go with that too. Ricky. Yeah, Ricky. Ricky's terrible. So when they refer refer to Said's, that's Sam Sedley, and Ricky is Nick Chenard, the goalie. I do not expect the goalie to have good chirps, so that is an <laughs> adequate response, in my opinion. That's another edition of What's in the Hat. Um, guys, a question for you both from the start of this season up until today. Uh, differences you both notice in your game, like I mentioned, from the beginning of the season up until today. Um, the difference for my, my game is definitely I wasn't as confident coming into the season just because uh, new environment, new people, new faces, right? So uh, – I don't think I was as confident, but now that I've settled down, uh, I'm definitely doing a lot better. Yeah, I'd say that probably the the biggest difference for my game is just learning how to play in like a a system and structure because uh, minor hockey never really had that. It was kind of just easy go with the flow. But I just say probably being able to learn how to play within a system and structure and uh, structure showing your uh, creativity at the right times. Uh, so. On the contrary of that, what's one area of your game that you're currently trying to improve upon the most? Mine definitely scores. <laughs> it, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'd probably say my offensive production. That would be an area I'm trying to get going. Now, last uh, the last time you guys were on, we asked a, a question of how the pandemic changed you as a person. Um, now we're going to alter that question a little bit and how has the ohl changed you as a person i know it's only been a few months uh, here maybe uh, six to seven months that you've been in the ohl but how has the schedule being away from home how has that changed you as a person we'll start with julian yeah i'd say honestly it's just uh, a lot of self-discipline you know living away from home trying to like do the right things learning that you're not going to have someone there all the time to tell you what to do and you have to have a lot of initiative to to do things on yourself. Uh, I say also, it's like a lot of routine and, and structure on like a day-to-day basis and just uh, getting used to that. Yeah, definitely for me would be having the same habits that I had at home and implementing them into uh, like the OHL lifestyle, you could say. Um, but the OHL hasn't changed my perspective too much uh, with COVID and all. Just it's a bit busier. That's really it. 
No, it's been a it's been a while since you guys went on a, a road trip. Your last one was up to the Sioux. In two weeks, you guys are headed stateside to Saginaw and to Flint. Um, what is your favorite thing to do on a road trip? Oh, that's um, tough. I don't even know. I, I, I like to watch a lot of car movies. Um, I personally like Fast and Furious. So I, I'll just throw, download a bunch of those movies and uh, play those all the way there. And then on the way back, I usually just have good conversation with the boys. I say mine's probably uh, ch uh, child tourneys, NHL tourneys on the PlayStation and the hotel rooms. Love getting those going. Those are always fun. And now before the show, we asked you guys to write down a question that you're going to ask the other person. It's time to unveil those questions. Uh, so we'll start with Julian. You ask your question to Teus, and then Teus, you're going to ask your question to Julian. All right, mine is uh, Gatorade or BioSteel and why? Uh, definitely BioSteel, just because my dentist hates that there's so much sugar in Gatorade. So uh, I made the conversion to BioSteel last year. And uh, my question for you is, what's your favorite food? Uh, favorite food? Probably my mom's pizza. Shout out to my mom for her pizza. That's <laughs> out there. Speaking of that, uh, guys, a uh, few more questions for you. Only got two minutes left. I want to know what the mood in the room's like right now. You guys snapped the eight-game losing streak Friday, and now technically on a two-game winning streak with the wins Friday and Saturday. Yeah, the the atmosphere in the room is great right now. Um, everybody's enlightened by uh, the past two wins, and I think if we just keep it up, it's going to stay that way. Um, there's not too much negative negativity in the room. There never has been, but uh, just keeping our heads high and uh, knowing that we're the better team coming into the next few games uh, will definitely help for us. Um, we've done messages to the parents on your first show. Let's do a message you have to the community for their support uh, towards you guys this season. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to uh, whoever's been at the games and supporting the attack and. Uh, we can't wait to see you at the next coming games. Yeah, just uh, thanks to the community and, like, all the fans for being there. Like, we know how tough it can be with uh, COVID protocols or restrictions, but no matter the capacity, just continue to show up and be there for us. So I, I appreciate that, and thank you. Uh, like, like we mentioned before, if you thought the month of February was busy, be prepared to spend more time at the Bayshore for the month of March. The attackers scheduled to play 14 games in the month of March, eight at the Bayshore, six on the road. Those stretch of games kick off. Tomorrow night, when the Owen Sound attack hosts the Kitchener Rangers, Friday night, the attack travel to Guelph for another matchup against the Storm. Saturday night, they host the Saginaw Spirit for the second time this season. And then on Monday, you're hearing this correctly, the attack are set to host the Guelph Storm. With that being said, we look forward to seeing everyone at the rink. And a big thank you to Julian Fantino and Teo Jordan for spending an hour here on Attack Wrap with us on Rogers TV. Thank you. Thank you. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Entertainer that streamed on Twitch. Let's get it right. This is authenticity. I don't think we could have imagined that chess influencers would be hitting.